Ladies and gentlemen. We got brand new competition over here on Leagues Online. Please subscribe to Old School Gamer Live. Bring your game pad and your pride. The competition's ramping up, and this is where you draw the line. If you got the passion, then you got the time. We got classic arcades. All you have to do is press for wine. From Nintendo Capcom, Taito to Konami, Midway, Data East, Sega to Atari, Outrun anyone in the Evo Ferrari. Become a rad race on any board and don't feel sorry. I battle waves of brigades and it feels so nice. I'm jumping through hoops and circuses just like Charlie My killer instinct, bashful, inspector the lobbies Or ruin the party, turtle shells all over your body We got King Creo brings the stress, no quarter brings the test Bring your A game, shut your mouth and nothing less Here's the quest, are you ready for the competition recognition On leaderboard beyond our comprehension? Be that one, be that number one guy Who will decide on old school game or live? Welcome, friends. I hope everybody is doing phenomenal out there tonight. We got an awesome episode. We got our friend Steve Sanders on here, an absolute legend. This guy did gaming before there was gaming. It's unbelievable. He figured it out before there was Google, before there was easy. He was one of the hard, hardcore guys back in the day that <laughs> had to do it by hand. So let's check him out here in just a little bit. Before we fire off, let's fire off our one-minute Commercial. Boom shakalaka! Hey everybody, it's Tim Kitcher here, the voice of some of your favorite video games like NBA Jam and NFL Blitz, and I'm here to talk to you about Old School Gamer Magazine. It's the magazine for retro gaming, and it's exploding. Kaboom! Old School Gamer Magazine now has twice the content, with new columns on retro gaming, arcades, retro computers, indie publishing, and a ton more. Plus gaming history, memories, and modern excitement in every issue. Find out when conventions are happening and what you might have missed at others around the country. Print issues come out every other month. And if you want to go green, digital options are available. If you aren't in the U.S., take a look at our digital options or the new print on demand through Amazon. This massively expanding magazine is all yours in print and digital for just $50 a year in the U.S., $75 in Canada, or digital-only subscriptions, including all of our back issues for just $20 a year. Visit OldSchoolGamer.com and subscribe now. That's OldSchoolGamer.com. Boom shakalaka. So there we go, guys. Get your subscription today. I hope you're doing great out there, guys. Good to see everyone. Can you see what's going on? What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday. I'm excited about this one. Like no quarter said, this guy did this without no YouTube. We know a bunch of people out there in the chat that go on YouTube before they play play a game. What no YouTube? He had to have a pen and pad and had to really study the game. And I told no quarter this before. The early arcade gamers, they were pretty much the, like QA testers. They knew that game like the back of their hands. So I'm excited about this one, folks. You had to come at it, you know, from, I guess, a coding perspective. Yep. I can't wait to talk to him and ask him how he did it. You know, I mean, if you think about how you figure out a game without any instructions about it, I mean, there's a little bit. But when you're trying to figure out an arcade game, it doesn't come with an instruction manual. Nope. So you're trying to figure this stuff out from the top of your head. Uh, it, it's so cool to figure out the pattern, to figure out all these different techniques. We're going to talk to him about it here in just a little bit. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about our latest retro news out there, guys. Casey, what do we got going on tonight? Well, i got a couple things I want to talk about tonight. Um, first thing, let's pull this up uh, full screen here. So can you see the Xeno Crisis article? Yep. So this game, me and No Quarter have been playing this game for a while. This game, uh, the first place that I've seen it was on Pie Packer, the, uh, the retro uh, gaming site where you can play games through your browser. And it's kind of like people always use the term love letter. But I, I think this one <laughs> fits. It's a, an exact love letter to Smash TV, Total, Total Carnage, Twin Stick Game. But guess what they're doing, No Quarter? They're putting this on physical media. Now, I know this has been a big topic of discussion. But I'm starting to see a lot of the indie developers, they're coming out with games, but there, there's been a thirst for cartridges. People getting their machines back out. Mm -hmm. People are going into the garages, getting their old 64s, their old Super Nintendos, and they want those cartridges. So this article just discussed that Xeno Crisis has decided that we don't want to just be digital anymore. We're coming out with an N64 cartridge. 
That is cool. So they've had a Genesis cartridge for quite a while. But that's cool to see that they have an, an Nintendo 64 version of it as well. That's really sweet. Now, I wonder uh, how this will play, uh, considering there's a solo stick on here. It's going to be interesting to see how that maps out. Well, probably like Golden Eye, right? Oh, Where yeah. Your, your uh, four buttons on the side were your look. That might be how it works. I don't know. That's a good question. Good question. All right. So that brings us to when we went to Midwest a couple weeks ago, guys, we met a lot of different people there that had a lot of really cool stuff going on. For example, this guy right here, his name is Adam Vaughn. We're going to have him on the show at some point, but he made his own NES game called Dungeons and Doom Knights. It's very much like, uh, out of my screen, very much like, he's climbing around with it. He's ve it's very much like <laughs> Castlevania, a couple wow. other different kinds of games, but it's its own cartridge. I haven't opened this one up, but this one's the gold edition. This guy's gone as far as making a Nintendo oh, that's pretty dope. rip off a uh, uh, magazine what? to what? talk about the game. I mean, it's so, so, so cool. Go check his website out, artix.com, where they have their own game launcher, multiple other games you can play. That's very, neat. very impressive. And so that's kind of what Casey was hinting on is this whole retro gaming community is moving back to They're going back. Not just, not just releasing ROMs, they're creating physical media. It's so cool. And just like the premium edition guys we had on a couple months ago that are doing exactly this. They're making cartridges for games that are digital games. If you're a, a game developer, you can contact the uh, premium edition guys and they can make you a custom cartridge. With and, a nice box. And everything with the box, instructions, everything to make it, you know, legacy quality, uh, uh, what would you call it? Collector quality yep. products. It's, so It's, it's kind of like the old school uh, no quarter when you would get a Sierra uh, PC game and you would get the big boxes and you would get a big book with it. That's what they're doing now. Definitely. Going back to that. Definitely. It's it's a, it's an art form is what they're bringing back. It's, it's beautiful, really. Let's talk about our last article here. Blockbuster's so, coming back. Man, we've been wanting to touch on this, but we, we've been busy with conferences and stuff like that. But man, this has been a debate for the longest. Me and No Quarter had this debate personally. <laughs> Physical media. So what we're seeing is blockbusters notice that a lot of things stuff is edited out. You're not getting the real movie. Full, you know, I got some scenes missing because a lot of things didn't age well, No Quarter. A lot of things didn't age. A lot of games didn't age well. So I'm wondering, would games get edited? If I'm streaming a game, um, somebody raises a stink about some scenes from Quake, right? Let's use Quake, because I remember that was a big controversy when it came out. Can they go back and edit Quake that you might be playing online digitally and you may not have the original game? Me personally, I like physical media because I know what I'm getting. To me, the quality is better. Digital is good for when I'm in a crunch and I just want to play something real quick. But if I want to get immersed in the technology and get 100% good quality, I'm going to pop in an old DVD. I'm going to pop in an old Blu-ray because I know that I'm going to get what I saw in the theater. What's your, what's your thoughts on that, No Quarter? Blockbuster sees a hole and they see their way back in. What you think on that? It's genius. Um, I'll tell you the trend now with the kids, my daughter, for example, she wants cassettes now. She was going into really? buying cassettes? records. Yeah, she's really? buying records. She wanted uh, uh, CDs and now it's all the way back to cassette. Her and her whole group of friends. Now they're buying cassettes. I had to give her my old Aussie cassettes, Iron Maiden, Van Halen cassettes, all Get that out of here. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting. I also bought her a Walkman. Man, you can buy a Walkman on you Amazon. You bought her a Walkman, dude? A Walkman <laughs> on Amazon for $15. It has a built-in speaker. It has a USB port that you can power it from the USB port and also rip the tape from the MP from the really? Walkman to your computer for $15. I need it's to find that. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a bunch of cassette tapes sitting here, but to your point, no quarter, I went and listened to a song, one of my favorite rap songs growing up. It was called The Message by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Well, while I'm on Spotify, I'm noticing this don't sound like the same song. It wasn't the same song. What has been happening is a lot of artists have been going back, re-recording their songs so they can get full royalties. 
So uh, you, you're not getting That's that same 22 year old rapper <laughs> that is hilarious. On, on the track. So physical media, and I've seen a lot of people in the chat are saying uh, six is saying physical media all the way. He does not want to stream anything. He doesn't think it's legit. <laughs> he wants physical media, but yeah, a lot no of people quarter. like that. And I don't blame him. I do love my vinyl. I have a huge vinyl collection love myself, my vinyl and too. there's just something special about that warm tone that comes out of it. We could go into the EQing of it and all that kind of stuff we've done with, I've told KC back in the day, but there's a lot of stuff that's cool about vinyl, a lot of stuff that's cool about cassettes. So what uh, do, you think, do you think, real quick, before we land this plane, do you think this taps into gaming emulation? Do I want to emulate Pac-Man or do I want a real machine? That'll uh, be for next week. <laughs> <laughs> that is a question, huh? What is more convenient and what makes more sense? Yep. But also, what's more real, right? I mean, you want to beat the cabinet on the real cabinet. Yeah. Right? And that's what you want to do. Let's say hi to everybody hanging out with us. Let's we got on, Wrangler. We got Nerd Lounge Master 84. What's up, man? We got Mitchell. We got our boy Six hanging low. We got the crew. Is here. We got the whole crew. Good to see everybody. We got Nix. What up, man? How are you? We got Andy. We got G.I. Joel. Good to see you, dude. We see some folks have emerged from the NBA Jam tournament last week. Uh-oh. <laughs> Speaking Metro of NBA, Arcade. let's talk about that real quick, okay? We learned a lot of stuff last week on that tournament, right? Oh, yeah. That was interesting. We uh, uh, So what happened, basically, is the guy that won, he uh, came up front, let me know that he put some codes in and stuff. And I think we all knew that at the end of the end of the show. We put about three hours into that show. We had a blast. Three hours, yeah. It might have been a little squirrely with the codes and stuff, but we still had a blast and we learned a lot. Yes. No codes, no names, no passwords on NBA ever, unless we want to do a big head tournament or an all fire tournament or something like this. Yep. So from now on, no codes, no shenanigans. No like numeric uh, yeah. codes put in. It's unfortunate <laughs> I have to even bring that up, but yes, no codes when we're doing a tournament unless it's specifically, you know, outlined. Yep. So anyway. We had an absolute blast in the NBA tournament. And guys, you if you want to see us. that, if you want to chuckle and laugh at us morons getting worked <laughs> over, you can go back and watch that from last week. Both hosts got that. This is unprecedented. Both Realized. hosts took an L. And we came up with the, with the damn tournament. Yeah. I welcome, lost in the first round. <laughs> welcome to my life. Welcome to my life. All right, guys. Let's bring on our guest for the night. We I'm excited we to talk to him. Let's see a, a little bit. Right here. That was the first Who's time this guy? Two Let's see. <laughs> world class players went head to head for a competition was, was Life Magazine. Without a doubt, I met players that were amongst the best in the world and maybe even would say or do whatever they could to make people believe they were the best in the world. Well, at that time, he was the world record holder on Centipede. So we got Steve Sanders with us tonight. Let's bring him on. Steve, how are What's you, friend? Going on, Steve? What up, dudes? How oh, you man. doing, King? How you doing, No Quarter? We're doing great, man. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Now, Steve was there in the very original days working on these games when they were released, beating the tar out of them. And I <laughs> would love to know how in the heck you went around that, man. I saw a little <laughs> bit about it. You guys drawing yeah, out the map little bit. Donkey Kong on paper, doing the same thing with grid paper, with Pac-Man and stuff, figuring out these patterns move by move by move. Let's go through that, man. I want to know the process. No quarter. I, I've never met a good video game player who wasn't at least a little bit obsessive. And, um, <laughs> that certainly applies to me. <laughs> My wife and kids can tell you horror stories, but, but uh, yeah, I, I was obsessed with video games and, uh, you know, I, I can remember the summer of 1981, the summer before my senior year of high school. I, I can't even believe how much Pac-Man I played, especially in light of the fact that I didn't own my own machine. I was not the manager of an arcade. Every time I played a game, it was 25 more cents. <laughs> and that doesn't sound like much today, but that was 1981. That was, that, Those were tough to come by, man. Yeah. Those quarters, cool. you had to work for them back then. <laughs> exactly Where were you playing, right. Steve? Local arcade or what? Yeah, I, I grew up in a, in a town not very far outside of Kansas City, Missouri, called Clinton, Missouri. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I was playing. At, we had a local arcade there. Uh, a lot of the uh, convenience stores would have a machine. Our right. Walmart had a Pac-Man machine. I think I almost lived in Walmart that, that summer. <laughs> you wasn't so, a door greeter either. <laughs> uh, no. And, and uh, you know, it got, it got to the point where by the end of the summer, 
I was I was playing the first 20 screens of Pac-Man pretty darn well. Uh, had patterns for all 20 of the first 20 screens. But what I didn't yet have was a pattern for the 21st screen, also known as the ninth key. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I, I could still recall to this day what, what happened. It was about the time for school to start. It was the middle of August. A buddy of mine was already in college and he came back from college. Uh, he had just started uh, and, he, and he came back and he said, hey, in Lawrence, Kansas, there's going to be a high score uh, contest on Pac-Man all through September and October. And whoever gets the highest score by Halloween on the Pac-Man machine will win a Pac-Man game. Nice. And, the, and I said, I said to my buddy, and I was, my mom was sitting there too. I said, uh, oh, wow, if I could just get a ninth key pattern, I'm confident I could win that machine. Now, here's what's so funny. I'm 17 years old. My mom, who's, you know, 21 years older than I am, which, by the way, King, is how much older I am than you. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, could, I could be your dad. <laughs> so my mom is sitting there. And, of course, she's thinking to herself, we're in a small town. This is my 17-year-old son. He's talking about Lawrence, Kansas, where KU is. And, and she gets, like, really condescending. And she says, oh, Stephen, we're talking about the University of Kansas. There are kids there from New York City. There is no <laughs> New way, York City. <laughs> there is no way that you're going to win the high score contest. There are kids from California. There are kids from Texas. There, there are kids from all over the world that go to the University of Kansas. You oh, have no chance. Ain't no way. No confidence now, in you, huh? Listen to this. <laughs> here's what's so funny. I, I now am so glad she did that because, guys, you know what I'm talking about. Once your parent oh, does man. that to you, you're like, I'm going to show you. I'm winning now. I'm winning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, What's I that? told you I played Pac Man all summer. Well, that was just the warm up. I mean, Ooh. now, now high school, senior year has started, and I've got to be in class, you know, from eight to three. But I'm telling you, from three until 10 o'clock, every single You put in work. I, I'm going to play Pac Man every night. It got so bad that it, I'm going to tell you something that. If somebody else said this, I don't know that I'd believe it, but I, I lived this. Here's what happened. By the end of September, I, I am, I'm to the point where I'm sitting in class during the daytime, and I am literally, in my mind, playing Running Pac-Man. Patterns. Yeah, and what I mean by that is it's like you've all heard the stories about the guys that can play chess in their mind, and, and yeah. you know, they really know what they're doing. That's what I'm talking about. Like I'm playing Pac-Man and I, I really actually know what I'm doing in my mind. And I'm going like, wow. oh, I could change this pattern by doing this because that's going to cause the men to do that. And then after school, I'd go test it out and make sure it worked. But that's that's how obsessed I became with Pac-Man. I was, I was to the point of playing it in my mind. And then sure enough, I, I won the machine on Halloween in 81. Man, winning a machine hot. That was a big deal because people ba didn't just yeah. own an arcade machine. That no. wasn't, it ain't like now. You got no. a three-quarter scale and all this. People didn't just have an arcade in the house. You had to be no, Ricky I'm, Schroeder, I'm looking right? at no-quarters machine behind him, and I'm all jealous because I wish I had <laughs> kept my machine. I sold it. But, yeah. Yeah, you had to be no. Rick, Rick Schroeder on a Silver Spoons to have an arcade in your house. That's I'm not exactly even going right. to tell you what that really is. It's actually, a, I guess I will. It's actually an arcade one-up cabinet, but. It did ah. a very good job on it. It looks just like the real thing, and yeah, they did a good job. Well. Yeah, they really did. Yeah, I from think, here it looks real. Yeah, it does. I agree. It? Yeah, they did. Uh -huh. really yeah, I can't tell from yeah from here. You definitely can't tell. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. even got the slanted screen. I mean, it's it's yeah. very very close. It's a little smaller, but fits perfect in your home. Yeah. So it's it's great for me. We don't yeah. want Steve to get on there no quarter because no, I don't want him on there. Yeah, we don't want him on. <laughs> Yeah. The, the leaderboard, because you know he's got online leaderboard, Steve. So we only can imagine <laughs> what you will do to those lead, online leaderboards. So yeah, don't go get one. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the other games that you're focused on back in the day. Now, in the famous picture, let's pull up the famous yeah, let's picture. Let's pull, yes. pull that up. Put that on screen. The famous picture. He's above the Donkey Kong, and Billy Mitchell has been pushed over to the side <laughs> on top of the the, the centipede. centipede there. Yeah, and, and he's never Billy. ever going to let me live that down. Rightfully so. <laughs> right, rightfully so. 
<laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, we, we play a little bit of the King of Kong clip with you. Can you talk a little bit about that whole situation? Not well, with let's, let's just start off by putting it right here on the table. I lied. All right. <laughs> with, 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 so I lied. Yeah. I That's lied. a big man right there. I like that. Well, it, let me tell you the kind of the history. This is this is this is not like a an excuse. This is a history thing to tell you kind of what happened. Uh, yeah. When when Bantam Books hired me to publish this or to write this Donkey Kong book, uh, before they gave me a contract, they wanted to know how good I was on Donkey Kong hmm. compared to hmm. anybody else, and I'm like. I didn't know how to answer that question except to say that I beat every high score at every arcade I went to in and around Kansas City. Hmm. And and uh, the guy at Bantam Books said, well, I want you to call this guy named Walter Day in Iowa uh, because he has started this hmm. high score uh, central called Twin Galaxies. So that's how I got connected with Twin Galaxies was through that. When I called Walter and told him my high score was 175,000, which was not a lie, that was accurate, uh, he told me that at that time, I had the world record. So I called back to Bantam Books, I get the book contract and everything's going great. Well, by the time I was finished writing the book, my high score was like 800 and, I don't know, 800 and some odd thousand. Hmm. Um, shortly after I wrote the book, I actually got to the kill screen in June of 82. Hmm. But but uh, here's what I wanted to say. By the spring of 82, I started hearing scores coming through Twin Galaxies of 900,000, 950,000. Hmm. And now by today's standards, we hear those scores and we think, well, okay, yeah, sure. But I'm telling you, based upon everything I know back then, and I got involved with Twin Galaxies, I got involved with the best video game players in the country, uh, perhaps in the world, and uh, I, I still to this day do not believe that in 1982, in the spring, anybody scored 900, 950,000 on, on Donkey Kong. And I, I thought to myself, I don't believe that, but I'm pretty upset that I've been dethroned as the world record holder. So what am I going to do about that? And I, I think the temptation to think, well, that guy lied, so I guess I'm going to lie too. And, <laughs> and, and now, with the benefit of hindsight, I can tell you for a certainty that there were multiple people lying, not just about Donkey Kong, but other games, because here's what happened on Donkey Kong. I didn't start off by saying, okay, Walter, I got 3 million on Kong, which of course we now know is impossible. I started off by saying I got a million. And then somebody else said they got 1.1. And <laughs> okay. then I was like, oh, well, I got 1.2. And I mean, it just, it kept going like that. Climbing just, the ladder. Yeah, Climbing climb the ladder. ladder. I, I didn't keep track of how many times it went back and forth, but it was not a few <laughs> times. It was, it was probably 10, 15 times until finally... Uh, when it was time for the Life Magazine thing, Walter called me and he goes, well, the world record holder on Donkey Kong has, I, I forget what he said, like, I don't know, two and a half million or something. And he said, if you don't break the score by November, then I'm going to have this other guy be the Donkey Kong holder. Uh, so, of course, then I got 3.1 million or whatever it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so on, on the one hand, it's absolutely true that Billy Mitchell deserved to be on top of Donkey Kong in that photograph. On the other hand, if it hadn't <laughs> been me lying about it, it would have been some other guy lying about it because I was the <laughs> only one telling lies about it. So, so either, somebody either else way, would Billy so. Mitchell would not have been on top of the machine. Oh, man, that's, that's funny. <laughs> Well, you got to yeah. figure it out either way, man. I mean, you're there. You're on the picture, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad about that. Well, and here, here's the thing. I the really, I don't know. It, I guess as an old man, it frustrates me. I, I think about the fact that 
I'm now known to so many people as the guy who lied about his scores. Yeah, that yeah. would be tough. It really would. Yeah, tough. Yeah. <laughs> and I deserve that. I, I wear it. I deserve it. It's it's true. But I, I just simply want to say this. I actually got a lot of world records that I got live at contests that people saw me. Billy Mitchell saw me. Walter Day saw me. Uh, I, I had one where Guinness Book actually, I've had, I had two, excuse me, two different contests where Guinness Book sent someone to be there. So it, it's not like I was not a good video game player. I just got carried away in 1982 with my flying. And, mm-hmm. and, and that was the time, to your point, Steve, it wasn't no social media. It wasn't no YouTube. So, hey, you could get away with that. <laughs> now you got all, you got the whole, yeah. everybody's coming after you. So. I mean, that, that, there, there were a lot. There were a lot of liars, and I, I really wish that more people come from out, that yeah. era would 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 own up to it. Yeah, yeah. well, we I mean, appreciate that. that. You know, yeah, you're that, being that real definitely about proves it. your yeah. your integrity, man. I mean, yeah. you you manning up to that and uh, letting us know exactly what happened. I mean, it's, hey, all you can do is be better, right? That's hey, all you no can quarter, do. That that actually reminds me of something. Uh, you guys didn't ask this question, but I'm going to put it out there. I have known Billy Mitchell since 1982. He and I started talking on the phone because of Twin Galaxies in the spring of 1982 or early summer, one of the two. And uh, I can promise you this, Billy Mitchell has never lied about a world record. Not then, not now, not anywhere in between. And anybody who says otherwise is at best incompetent and at worst, they're lying. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, I've watched Billy for many years. He's actually... A very very great game player and you don't you don't do what he's done and not be a great nah. game player if you have any i, I questions, deserve to be called play. a liar he does not wow that's powerful there you heard yeah. this live on uh, on our show god that's a powerful testimony statement. right there yeah for sure it's powerful but we've yeah. seen we've seen the ugly side of me and no quarter dealt with that with i won't say a name all the time. but it was a game and it, it was a score that was set and this person was accused of lying for the game. And we went through that, what, last year, right? Two years ago? Yeah. Um, and they tried, and they actually pulled his record. But we know the guy is not even technically savvy enough to, to lie, right? So, you know, but we see it on all fronts. Yeah. And it's, that's what, hey, that's what Billy and I used, that's what Billy and I used to deal with back in the day. We would, we would get, we would meet people uh, who would show up at an event like Life Magazine. Like I showed up at Life Magazine lying about donkey kong right well uh i don't i don't want to throw anybody under the bus but i'll just say that there was a guy on another one of those games that also didn't deserve to be there just like i didn't deserve to be there and we're asking him about this classic game that billy and i know how to play could play the dragster he could not answer the <laughs> yeah. questions he could not answer the questions and so <laughs> finally we're saying to him like well you know what happened after you got past the 21st screen and and he's and he starts talking about how <laughs> he was drunk and he doesn't remember uh, uh, the classic course, case huh? course. <laughs> yeah of course yeah. i did this amazing high score completely wasted so I don't what happened it, <laughs> I, don't remember. I don't remember i had too many blue labels <laughs> yeah. wow and, you know and i even though i knew that i for example could not score three million on donkey kong uh I, I was I was very good at Donkey Kong. So when Billy said, "Let's play a head-to-head game," of course his intent was, "I'm going to show you," and my intent was, "I'm going to show you that I'm really good." And we we played a game. He shellacked me, but but you know <laughs> I held my own. I did okay. So let's talk about some of your process now. Figuring out the Pac-Man patterns. You said you you right. did a lot of it in your head. I've yep. seen drawings of you guys. I don't know where I where I saw maybe on King of Kong. The multiple, multiple I think it was I've on seen, there, yeah. Yeah, I've seen you guys. Maybe it was Donkey Kong. One of those games where you guys are drawing out each map, figuring out the best place, the best time. Can you describe your, your process for that stuff? Yeah, let me let me actually start with talking about Ms. Pac-Man. Okay. Uh, okay. So this would have been 1983. This would have been after uh, the That's Incredible contest. And I don't know the exact date maybe just a little before that's incredible there were some guys i was not one of them that that started to figure out how to uh what i'll call the judo method 
or the mentally reverse engineering method of Ms. Pac-Man. Hmm. Sort of a the, the, the mindset was, wait a second, if I go left, they go left and follow me. If I go right, they go right and follow me. And then here's the one or two exceptions to when, you know, you expect them to follow me, but they don't. Hmm. And so in late 82, early 83, some guys started thinking, I'm going to start being very intentional about watching exactly where I am on Ms. Pac-Man and see exactly what they do. And the reason I'm talking about Ms. Pac-Man is Ms. Pac-Man has randomness built into it that Pac-Man did not. Ah. With Pac-Man, a, a 10-year-old could pretty quickly figure out, oh, hey, if I do the same thing every single time, so will they. Uh, whereas with Ms. Pac-Man, with the randomness, that was never true. So Ms. Pac-Man was extremely much more difficult than, than Pac-Man. But when they started to kind of reverse engineer it mentally um, and to figure it out, then after they began to figure it out, I was sort of looped in. Billy Mitchell kind of looped me in to say, okay, I'm going to teach you, Steve, how we are reverse engineering Ms. Pac-Man. Huh. Well, what I had to do was I had to sit down by hand and just hand draw a Ms. Pac-Man maze. <sighs> and then Billy would be on the phone with me and he would, he would tell me how to begin the round of Ms. Pac-Man. Uh, and, it, and it's, it's very complicated, but you can, you can watch this on YouTube nowadays, but you have to start off the game kind of just playing defense, kind of playing stay away. Uh, I just, I don't want to get killed because I don't know exactly what they're going to do. And for the first minute of the game, I can't even control uh, what they're doing very well because they're so random. So you play stay away. Wow. And, and then after a minute of stay away, now you can control the men if you know all these secrets. And so I would sit there and hand draw uh, Billy's instructions to me. And then after I would hand draw it, I would sort of spend time meditating on it, memorizing it, and then I would go and do it on the machine. So wow. that's how I learned to play Ms. Pac-Man. And it, in 1983, I was one of the top 10 players in the world on Ms. Pac-Man. And back then, that that was a big deal. At least it was to, to all of us uh, original old school gamers. We all believed Ms. Pac-Man was the hardest game. So was it fat? Ms. Pac-Man is a, a little bit faster, right? Does it uh, have a little bit? Great question. I'm so glad you asked that. And I'll tell you why I'm glad you asked that. Somebody your age heard me tell this story. And I told them my highest score, at the top 10 score that I just referred to, my highest score was like 450,000. And again, the person was your age. And they didn't tell me at the time, but they just didn't believe <laughs> me. They just thought, they was like, there's no way 450,000 was a top 10 in the world score. Right. And the reason they didn't believe me was they had seen just some bartender at their bar in the 90s that had scored like 700,000 or 800,000 <laughs> or something. Yeah. And they're like, there's just no way that 450 was a top 10 score. Well, the 1982 version of Ms. Pac-Man was not faster than Pac-Man. Ah. It was not what we would call turbo Ms. Pac-Man. Hmm. Starting in about 83 or 84, all of the arcade owners, all of them, I mean, rare exception, they they all sped up their machines with the with No, the it makes sense. Chip. Okay. And so the original Ms. Pac-Man was the hardest game that there was in the early 80s. Mm. Wow. What are some of your... Pac-Man's easy. <laughs> I've Pac-Man, Donkey Kong. What are some of your other high score challenge or achievements? All right. So I have, uh, in the past, held world records on four different games and on one of them, three different ways. So the four games are Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Joust, and Super Pac-Man. Mm. Joust. With, Ooh -wee. With, with Joust, there are four different records that are recognized, and really five if you go back in history. Cur currently, the four are five-man and then doubles team five man cool Two at once uh and then marathon which you know unlimited men and then team marathon wow or the historical score that's no longer recognized is two hour time limit 
So on Joust in 1983, I had the two hour time limit world record that was actually achieved in an actual Guinness Book contest in Otumwa, Iowa in July of 83. And then much more recently in like 2011 or so, uh, my son Isaiah and I got the five man doubles world record. Wow. And my good friend Lonnie McDonald and I got the marathon doubles world record. Very, very cool. You know, I think I've, I think Lonnie McDonald is that guy that contacted me a while back, Casey. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He must be the guy. Yeah. yeah very, very cool, man. I didn't hmm. know you had joust records as well. That's, that's a tough game. No quarter joust. to tell you. I struggle with that game. <laughs> you know, that's a tough I, game. I, I was very proud of my Ms. Pac-Man score that I got to the top 10 in the world, but I could not take any credit for like figuring out how to beat Ms. Pac-Man. I, I had learned how to beat Pac-Man, but I could not figure out Ms. Pac-Man. Mm. Uh, Billy Mitchell, uh, Tom Asaki, and Spencer Uren were the three guys. Oh, and oh, and uh, I'm sorry, Chris Steele. Uh, those are the four guys that I credit for reverse engineering Ms. Pac-Man, and then Billy taught me how to play. But with Joust, uh, that's the one I'll, I'm most proud of that I learned how to beat Joust. Um, what is your technique? Are you on the bottom bottom level on, under, underneath the, the land? I will tell you that I can play Joust however you want to play it. I can stay underneath the bottom. I can – I don't – do this very often but i can stay above the lava in the in the ledge area i think that's the most dangerous of all but i can i can do that just hovering uh, there yeah and then mm -hmm. my personal favorite way to play and this is not lonnie's favorite but it's my favorite is to play the very very top that's, uh, that's my that, way yeah that, that's and the, the very very top is also the speed way like if you really want to get through a round quickly just play the top learn how to play the top and not die and and you could just zoom through uh, rounds. I will. Uh, the way I do it is I, I, I spawn, I get it to the very top, and I, ha I hang one of my feet off the very right edge. If you hang that foot off, then they will slowly be on the second layer and they will come up and hit you. And you don't even have to do anything, they'll hit you. And even you will even absorb the egg. So you just yeah. have to sit there, and the egg will go right into you. And then it'll do that for the first two uh, stages. Then you have to come down. Yeah, yes. I, I have a kind of a little pattern that I do on, on, on that game myself. Yeah, I, I tell people, if you want to learn how to play Joust, here's what I would tell you to do. Either either use an emulator, or if you've got access to an actual machine, either way, go in and change the settings so, to give yourself essentially unlimited men. For example, okay. the actual arcade machine, if you want to, you can set it to give you a free man every 1,000 points, which is ludicrous. <laughs> I'm about to say that's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just get free men, free men, free men, free men, and you'll never run out of men. Uh, um, so, so give yourself unlimited men, and okay. and then just play and and take risks. Like do things that are dangerous. Do things that you think might get you killed, and keep doing it until you get really good at doing dangerous things. And. Then, after you've gotten good with unlimited men doing dangerous things, then go back and put it on uh, what we used to call Twin Galaxies tournament settings, like five-man only or um, uh, the factory settings or that kind of thing. Mm. Okay. okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, see, before we let you go, man, can you give us any tips on Pac-Man? How in the heck do you get over 100k how to get over 200k your maybe grouping strategies well what i would tell you on pac-man you can do grouping but you don't need to uh grouping really is only necessary if you're trying to get above 250,000, trying to maybe get a world record and the reason you want to learn grouping if that's what you're trying to do is you can get bored after three or four hours you can get distracted yeah. And all of a sudden your brain sort of wakes up and you're in the middle of a screen and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't remember exactly what I, where I am. I don't know what move to make at, at the next split second. And now you're off pattern. And once you're off pattern on that ninth key, 21st level, 
I mean, it's really, really hard to stay alive. It's I mean, even for an expert, it's you have really zero hard time, to stay alive. right? No. Zero time where you can eat them. Then there's no. Yeah, they're they're faster than you are, and if Whew. you're eating dots, they're a lot faster than you are. Uh, and so, even for an expert, it's hard to stay alive. That's the reason to learn grouping is so that you can stay alive in those moments in the later round. Interesting. Okay. Absent that you don't need to learn grouping to play original Pac-Man. It's an all pattern game. And the Got reason it. it's an all pattern game is very, very simple. Here's the reason. When the four ghosts come out of the box, as soon as the round begins, if you look, they're going to do the exact same thing every single time, no matter what. There's no randomness to it. It's all predetermined. After about, and I forget how many seconds, I'm going to say 12 seconds or something. I don't know exactly. Uh, after a certain number of seconds, you'll notice that all four ghosts then will suddenly turn around and go backward from whatever direction they were going. That's the moment when instead of doing their preordained, pre-pattern moves, that's the moment that now they're going to hunt you down. They're now focused on you and not focused huh. on their preordained moves. Call that attack mode. Yeah. Attack attack mode, sure. Okay. Huh. Well, wherever you are on the board at that exact moment, if you're in the same spot every single time, they're going to do the same thing every single time to come attack you. Uh... All right. So that's why I said even a 10-year-old can eventually figure out on the cherry board, if they do the exact same pattern every time, then... The, mint, the ghosts will do the exact same attack every single time. Huh. And, and, and that's why you can, you can easily come up with patterns to, to get all of the ghosts and all of the fruit on all of the first, uh, sorry, the, the fifth key is the first time that you can't get any uh, blue ghosts. Um, then the sixth key and the seventh key and eighth key you can get the ghosts again, but then the ninth key, you can't get the ghosts anymore because they don't turn blue at all. But uh, my point is you can get patterns to get all the ghosts and all the fruit. And that's how Billy Mitchell got a perfect score eventually. Mm -hmm. So huh. I, I use the Ken Houston uh, patterns. Are there better ones that you would suggest to run? There you go. That's what those, yeah. those are the patterns that I know. Yeah, I got, I got that book too. Yeah. That's a yeah, good one. I, uh, this the problem with these patterns is they are really really old patterns they are not ideal um, and if i remember correctly there's no am i wrong is there no ninth key pattern in this book there is but i've tried and i can't get it to work yeah well probably I because it, i mean when, when ken Houston was writing this book this was about the same time that i was scoring 2.88 million on pac-man and i will tell you by today's standards my ninth key pattern sucked. It was bad. See, uh, I'm, I'm but, sitting right at about 181, almost to 200K, and I can't beat that 200K because I don't know that ninth pattern. And I, I, to be serious, I don't know all the patterns all the way through. I, and I don't want to because I like having to fight at the end. It makes me feel like I accomplished something more. <laughs> well, so I, 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 I've never gone on YouTube uh, to try to see, like, how to how to learn these patterns i assume somebody has recorded yeah tunnel gotta terror. be there is. tunnel terror that's actually a name that 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 we named a particular ninth key pattern uh, back in 1982 or something tunnel terror uh and, and in tunnel terror the, the it, it's it's almost comical the ghosts right. are like they're all four ghosts go in the tunnel and about the time they get all the way through they turn around and go back to the other side of the tunnel and then they reverse again and they reverse again, <laughs> and reverse again. <laughs> and they're just in the tunnel the whole time. Uh, and I mean, it's not quite like that, but it's pretty close to that. Mm. And so tunnel terror is a great pattern because if you go off pattern, the ghosts are probably in the tunnel and you can, you know, get back, get away on. from yeah. them. Mm. But I would say to you, uh, no quarter that you, what you ought to do is, is go find some of the recorded, patterns for the ninth key and learn one of those like tunnel tear uh we also had one i can't think of the name we called it but it, it was basically the speed pattern um the blitz pattern and it was it was the fastest pattern 
anybody had ever found to get all the way through the ninth key super quickly. It's pretty safe. It's not bad, uh, but it's mostly for speed. Very cool. I'm definitely going to look into that, man. Like I yeah, said, I'm going to look trying, some stuff up. Yeah. I, you know, a couple of years ago, I got really deep into Pac-Man. For 35 years, I played Pac-Man very casually. I could yeah. get through the first <laughs> or second stage or whatever, and I loved it, but I never really took it seriously. A few years ago, I decided, you know what? I'm going to spend some time on Pac-Man, really learn this game, because I want to figure out how to get a little bit better than 20K, 30K. That's as far as I could go. That's my well, limit, 30K. <laughs> That's I, can't, I started I can't break watching it. Billy Mitchell very, yeah. very intently on Twitch every night. I said, all right, I got to learn these patterns. I, I could see him grouping, figuring out the grouping, going up and hiding in the holes where they pass you by. They can't go up, all that different stuff. So I, I spent a lot of time learning that, and I could. Now I can get almost to 200K. I did get the uh, Twin Galaxies world record on the arcade one-up cabinet, what, like two years ago? Two, two years which ago. Which was yeah. 181, because just because nobody else submitted the score so i, I did get that uh, <laughs> now, no quarter, well, steve sure might get one <laughs> i'm sure you're aware of the four spots on the original yes. pac-man board where they cannot follow you they can't right? go up where they yep. can't go up yeah okay yep. you, that, that's a that's one every person who's trying to learn pac-man should know because that's a great sort of beginner's way to get out of trouble mm -hmm. okay yeah that's how i've been learning how i've you know i haven't really got the instructions from billy but i watched him he would Go, he would come from the tunnel, go up, and then jump into that left upright, and the ghost would follow and pass him by, and then come up, and then come down, and then he comes out of there and faces left. Yet I, I, I've been trying to figure that out for a long time now, that whole grouping. And so uh, one of these days I'll get it. Yeah, You're giving some gr help. Grouping is complicated. It takes, I mean, it took a long time. Billy's a bright guy. I'm, I'm a relatively bright guy. It took a long time to explain grouping. Uh, it's it's a complicated deal. Yeah, yeah. If they maybe on another episode, we'll have you on. We can talk yeah. about it. Get your Just screen on. Gameplay. Get your screen. Yeah. Show us exactly what you're doing. Maybe you should, get, that. You hey. should get Billy on to explain grouping because he's oh, yeah. a much better teacher at that than I am. Yeah, well, we had him on a couple of weeks ago. I just didn't want to push that boy. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to force him into Pac-Man. He's got to be tired of it by now. It's got to be like, you know, like Aerosmith playing a, their, you know, number one song again, you know, or something like it over and over and over again. Well, I'll <laughs> right. tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send Steve uh, a, a deluxe cabinet, mail <laughs> one to his his law office there, and maybe he'll go at no quarter. <laughs> I, I think he'd be very surprised at how, how nice they really are. Yeah, they're pretty nice. <laughs> We're going to send him one. That I like sounds that. sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. I like that. Steve, I appreciate you being on tonight, man. Thank you so much. We kind of went a little this longer than you order. Do, you know? Thank you, guys. This, this was great. great. Definitely. Uh, we will definitely have you on again, man, if you'll be on. I, I want to continue our our, yeah, our sure. conversation on this stuff. You have some awesome insight, and a lot of the, the chats absolutely love They're it. They're excited. So, you got people yeah. inspired. People are actually – I saw one guy say he's going to go pick up a uh, deluxe cabinet. So you got some people <laughs> that's about to go play some Pac-Man now, so thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, thanks so much. I look forward to being on again sometime. Have thanks, a good Steve. Evening. We'll thanks, talk to you soon, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Man. Man, I oh, want to cool. go play. No, you got, hey, I want to go play me some Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm going to be firing this thing off here in just a little bit. Let's get through the rest of the show, guys, so I can yeah. play some Pac-Man here. Uh, let's talk about our friends of Old School Gamer, all of our companions that do shows, all that kind of stuff. Rascler, Shotgun Sean. Our good pals, they have their show every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Check them out. They have a couple other shows, too, that they do. Talking retro gaming. They even play games live, so go hang out with them. Our pal Steven over there at Tech Buzz, go hang out with him. His show, Game Time, on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Same stuff. Talking retro gaming, retro gaming news, and game playing. Our good pal UAG, your average gamer, has cool stuff every single week. Go check him out on his weekly retro party. Uh, our tournaments this week, guys, what an we absolute got? blast, some super cool stuff popping this week. MCAP's running victory. He has, uh, I think he's extended this one. It was running last week. He's extending this one for another week. Another week. Put the blast. So we are going to uh, get some time in on the victory table on the Legends Ultimate Pinball over on FX Land. Dear also imagine. On, yeah, also on the Legends Pinball, but you can play it on other formats, I guess. Theater yep. of Magic this week, guys. Get in on that one. Now, game of the week this week is going to be Neo Turf Masters because oh it was the Masters last week. I hope everybody get to watch that because that was an absolute blast. 
uh, Casey, I, I, I'm I'm saddened that you missed that because that was I was watching, dude. Last day, yeah, Sunday. That was crazy. We I didn't see it flipping like that. I didn't think Rom was gonna win, but he came on board and he. I didn't see that it. coming. That was, my boy Tiger. He, he's not doing too well. He's hurt, and he's hurt, man. That boy, he's hurt. I think he's put his time in, but man, what a legend. What an absolute legend. So anyway, Neo Turf Masters, go check out Neo Turf Clubhouse every week on Facebook. We're going to do a Masters play along next year. I talked to Warren about this. We're going to host a Masters play along where we're going to play the U.S. course each day of the Masters and see what our scores are at the end of the week. So it'll be a blast. Uh, Gary Ray, our pal over there on Friday night fights. Go hang out with him or Sunday night fight night. Sunday night. Hang out with him at 8 p.m. Central. They do or Eastern. They do a lot of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat stuff. Hold on here. Mortal Kombat, all kinds of stuff like that. So go hang out with those guys. All right, Casey, let's talk about our old school weekly countdown tonight, guys. Casey, we are talking about his favorite Atari arcade titles. Man. What's number five for you, Hotshot? Do you remember what you said? Man, I think I might have said, uh, bat, did I say Black Widow for number you five? Said Warlord. No, Warlord. Okay. <laughs> so we got Warlords at number five. But what I like about this game is the back and forth. I have it on my pub table, but I'm going to tell you the first place I played this. On my Darth Vader edition 20, Atari 2600 I had gotten growing up. So this game, it had a lot of back and forth. It has a lot of nostalgia for me that I played with my older brother. So that's my number five. No nice. This one, I didn't really appreciate you putting this in number five because this is probably one of my favorite Atari games. This is just uh, me and my daughter. We play this one every single time we go to the, the arcade simply because it's so easy to play and it has a lot of uh, technique <laughs> to it, actually, crazy enough. Uh, number four for KC was pole position. Now, <laughs> that was one of the first driving games I played, so it definitely made my list. But Atari has way too many titles for me to put it up, up top, no quarter. But it's on my list. <laughs> definitely, man. This was one that if I saw it in the art in the arcade, I don't know why I keep saying Atari. When I saw this in the arcade or in the gas station or in the hotel, that. I would see this one a lot in hotels. I would see this in uh, the Howard Johnsons, uh, uh, different places like that. Pole position was always in hotels for some reason. Number three for KC this week is... Hey, this cab. Oh, my God. When I first saw it, it was in Aladdin's Castle Arcade. And it was the sit-down or, yeah, cocktail, no, sit-down version that had the cover on top. That version of this arcade... That was such a good arcade experience. And even to this day, I still play it on the uh, three-quarter three quarter scale, and I still have a good time. The vector graphics are still, I mean, they're minimal to today's standards, but amazing to play. A lot of replayability on this game. So that's why I have it in my list. Back in the day, any game that had a, a, a cabinet to sit inside, that sit-down cabinet was so I straight cool to me. It. Me too. Because I didn't have a car, I would. Yeah, I it made you drive. feel like you were driving. So all of a sudden, I was grown up, right? It was so cool. Number two, man, <laughs> this game. <laughs> I knew I was going to get some some crazy looks for this game. I'm gonna tell you what draws me to Marble Madness, guys. It is the soundtrack. I'm a musician. I don't know if it's I would call it synth wave, but it has a relaxing soundtrack, and then it keeps you moving with having to. Slow down with the trackball, speed up with the trackball, going light with the trackball. It really uh, brought out the trackball usage. And that was the favorite game that I like to use the trackball on is Marble Madness. Plus, you can't beat the soundtrack. I remember this game from the NES. That's how I played it. Essentially, really? yeah, most of the time when I was a kid was on the NES. And it played very well, actually, crazy enough. You wouldn't think so. I know. You know, I'm trying to think if I played this on Nintendo. I, I, I first played it in arcade, but I, I, I got to go back and look at it on the NES. It's an absolute blast of a game. If you guys have never played this one, fire it off today. Fun game. Number one for KC, and I'm glad that he picked this one because this is probably my number one Atari game as well. Number one, Crystal Castles. 
I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real. I'm a I'm an artist. I like looking at artwork in this cab. Is probably one of the best looking calves that I ever Beautiful. seen in a quarter. Absolutely. In person, if you guys have not seen the Crystal Castles arcade in person, you're missing out. Um, but not just that. This was probably one of the first arcade games with an actual ending. Am I correct? I think that might be the first. I think you're right, man. I've never seen it, but I think you're right. I I've never seen the ending, yeah. but it has an ending. and It has tons of good gameplay, tons of different strategies. And a hell of a looking cab. So that's my top five. It's an absolute beautiful cab. It's a beast of a cab, too. I love the speaker placement, that diagonal speaker placement. Yeah. With the, with the, uh, when those speakers are blasting, it sounds awesome. And the cab is beautiful as well. Just don't beautiful. forget the don't forget the LED trackball. We're talking what 1984? 83? I think it's 84? I think it's newer or older than that. But yeah, yeah, 83, 84, somewhere around there. Yeah. So I mean yeah, absolutely beautiful. All right, guys, let's talk about our game of the week this week. It is Neo Turf Masters. Like we said earlier, we are playing the Grand Canyon course, the USA course, uh, trying to play along with the, the Masters. We are a week late, but it's, you know, it is it is what it is. It is well, I'm going to play the first three holes here, and let's see if you guys can match my score or beat my score. Here we go. All right. Switch your audio, too, no quarter. We're getting some echo. So Arcade and Penn God said that it's a very tough game to max score. Hey, <laughs> I now we talking with Steve about studying the games. I seen a guy play Neo Turf Masters and he knows the exact pixelation to hit the ball. I, I don't know what he did. It's something to do with pixels. And these folks are hitting holes in one on this game. Let's see what I can pull off here, guys. Let's see. And I know quarters. He's pretty decent on at this game. So I, let's see what he pulls off here. Later on this week, probably this weekend, I'm going to do a full 18 hole play along. So you guys can join in on that. I was going to do it during the Masters, but I just never got around to it. I've been training on this new 3D printer that we got, and I haven't been had much time to do anything but learn how to run that thing. So uh, now that the trainers are gone, I can focus on some gameplay here. Play. Now he can play. I tell you what, this game, folks. This game, as far as graphics, I think it might have came out in 96. Um, the graphics was amazing for the time. It, and it still holds up well. Still holds up well. I think this game is a little bit more forgiving than um, what's the other golf game we played? Major title. Major title. Oh, my God. Major title is not forgiving at all. But I think uh, Neil Turk, it gives you a little leeway. Yeah, Neo Turf is a little easier on you, but I mean, it still is tough. It's still I mean, a tough game, yeah. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's a little bit easier than the major title is. So, CP, he's playing on uh, the Legends Ultimate. Yeah. You can play this game on many different formats. I'm using the, the Ultimate here. I have the UCE for the game here. You can play it on RetroGames.cc, which we will do at some point because we can play it online multiplayer using yep. that, uh, that platform. And we done it. It's pretty, pretty uh, seamless. No latency. Yeah. It actually works. It was absolutely beautiful. I couldn't believe that it worked. Hey, and the funny thing is, we played it on Retro Game CC multiplayer on the Legends Ultimate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on Easy the Legends PC. Ultimate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that Legends Ultimate. I tell you, we did some things with it, but yeah, we we were able to play online with this game. So. All right, so, we got two birdies, guys. Last hole here coming up. Can I get a birdie on guys. <laughs> he Maybe I'll get an cross. That's funny. He tries to get a birdie every hole. Yeah, Seeps said good. thanks. Hey, Seeps, hey, we got to fire this off, Seeps. I'm going to play. I've been putting in some uh, time on this game because no quarter has been working me over. I'm tired of it. I've had it. I've been putting in time. I left my machine on this game. So I, <laughs> I will tell you guys, my best score on this game is six under. So if you oh. can beat that, then let's see what you got. I'm going to try to beat it live. Oh, no. He, he, to he's, too busy flapping. he's too busy flapping. Yeah, there I go. Flapping the chops, and I'm going to miss hit, just like usual. It's like <laughs> real. It's like realistic here. Like I'm actually it playing is. golf. Drop, drop, nice. drop. Nice. Oh. Nice. Bounce. Oh, up. it bounced. Flag. Rich Rodello said the Legends Ultimate is the Swiss Army mm. knife of home arcade. <laughs> That's a there great way go. to put it. 
that's a great way to put it. Good job, no quarter. Hey, there you go. We got par on the last hole, but you know, yeah, could have been a lot worse, yeah. I guess, right? Could have you could have did like <laughs> me, hit it uh, in the water or something. <laughs> could have been a lot worse. All right, well, guys, appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Remember, game of the week tonight or Neo this Turf. week. Game of the week this week is Neo Turf. Where is my banner at? Where do I put it? Here it is. Neo Turf Masters, guys. So get in your scores. Send it to the Facebook page and see if you can beat my six under. Oof. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Casey, you got any last words for our friends? Well, I tell you what, I'm I'm trying to go uh play me some pack, man. I want to be up there with, with Steve and, and, and all these other big sh hot shots. I, I gotta get my score up because that, that thirty thousand ain't 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 cutting it. You, you gotta put your time in, man. That's I all there is to it. In. You got to put your time in, man. There, there's nothing easy about those old games. It, it seems like it's easy. Hell it's no. Not. <laughs> you got to put hours and weeks and months of time into it. That's what I loved about it, man. That's what's so cool about these games is they seem simple, but they're not. When Whenever you try to excel at them and you try to be the best of the best, it's a lot of work. And it really shows your character, shows that you are a hard worker and you're able to focus on something. I absolutely love video games because of that yep. i appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight please join us next thursday 7 30 or 7 o'clock p.m central time for our next episode of old school gamer live i'm not sure who's on there next week but it's going to be another awesome it's gonna guest be somebody week. yeah yep so thank you ever thank you everybody and we will see you next week peace